Hello. Hi. Not sure if anybody's here yet or not, but we'll go ahead and get started either way. Yes. Um, and actually, we wanted to let you guys know that this will actually be our last one that we're going to film together here at the yoga studio. Um, you know, just as this continues to grow and seems to be getting more and more and more out of control, we were quarantining ourselves, coming here only, and then quarantining ourselves. But at some point, we're going to have to go get groceries and kind of be out in the public. And, you know, Steph has two little ones, and she's immunocompromised, and my daughter is immunocompromised and has severe asthma. Um, so we just feel like it's in the interest of the people that we love to completely quarantine and not come here anymore. So we're going to just alternate. That makes me very sad. <laughs> yeah. we, we look forward to this. Yeah, the studio just seems like such a normal place to be. So. Yeah. yeah, very sad. But we do have a plan of action for that. Yes, we have a plan of action. I think you guys will like it because it's going to give you more of an opportunity to practice. Um, we don't have a schedule yet. We will work on that today. But we are going to film each... Um, I think this is what we're going to do. We're each going to film every day from our house. So one of us will do like a morning class and one of us will do an afternoon class. Um, and then you'll have two options to practice from your house and we will um, go from there and hopefully that works. And we're still navigating yes. um, the music situation and yeah. not getting that pulled down um, because we're using content that doesn't belong to us. So it may be that we just kind of provide you with a, a Spotify playlist and you can log in and play that and then play us. Or it might be that it's live for the amount of time that we can keep it live. Yeah, we have a we have a license to play music in the studio, but apparently that does not transfer over to Facebook. So we've had some issues with the videos that we're posting um, being muted or being taken down. Um, but with that being said, we always have our YouTube channel where all of the videos will be after we do the lives. So you can find them there for sure. Yeah. So um, today, yay, happy stuff. <laughs> yes, happy Monday. And um, it is. Yeah, I know. Monday. I know. It's hard to know what day it is. <laughs> um, we're going to break down, we had a lot of requests for Chaturanga and for Crow, and those actually can a little bit kind of go hand in hand, some of the same key components in both. So we're going to hit both of those. Yes, yeah, so we're going to do a short little warm up and then we are going to get right into that. So if you guys want to join us in child pose, and just start to get comfortable. We'll do just a really quick warm up so you're not just completely cold getting into your poses. Um, but just go ahead and open the knees wide. And let your hips rest back on your heels. You can bring your forehead to the top of your mat. And take a moment to either reach your arms out in front or you can bring your arms back down by your sides. And no matter what you have been going through today or over the weekend, if you've seen you last, um, see if you can just let that go. And for the next 30 minutes, we're just going to be together in this type of virtual community and we're going to move and breathe and hopefully just kind of forget about all the stuff that's going on outside. And hopefully when you turn upside down and do some different stuff, you'll feel better um, after this is over. So go ahead and exhale and empty the air from the lungs. And then take a deep inhale in. And you'll pause, hold your breath at the peak. And exhale, release and let go. And again, inhale in, start to fill the belly, the lungs, the ribs and the chest, pause. And exhale, release. Last time, take a full inhale in. And exhale, let it go. And at the bottom of your breath with your lips sealed, start to breathe in and out through your nose and start to find your own rhythm and start to cultivate your own breath. You can set an intention for this practice that we're doing today if you choose. And then on an inhale, as you're ready, press up to a tabletop and come to all fours, hands and knees. And take a moment to feel a foundation so you're pressing your palms into the mat, the tops of your feet to your mat, take a deep breath in. And exhale, chin to chest, and round your spine. Take a couple of breaths here. And remember this feeling, because I bet Nikki will be teaching it later. Mm -hmm. And inhale, drop your belly. Lift your hips, arch your back, and pull your chest through. Exhale, chin to chest, round your spine. And inhale, drop your belly. Lift your hips, lift your chin. Exhale, chin to chest, round. 
and inhale, drop your belly, lift your hips, lift your chin. And exhale back into a neutral position. We'll just walk the hands forward for just a moment into extended puppy pose, just pressing the chest down, lifting the hips high. And then right away, roll through to your belly in the sphinx pose with your forearms at the top of your space. Lift your chest, inhale. Exhale, lower your forehead to the top and line your hands up with your chest. Inhale into cobra pose. And exhale, release your forehead down. Inhale, cobra pose. Lift the chest, not the shoulders. And exhale, forehead down, release. And inhale, last time, into cobra pose. Lift up. And exhale your forehead down. Inhale into a tabletop, hands and knees, and exhale, tuck your toes, lift your hips into a downward facing dog. And take some time just to pedal out your feet and kind of get into your body. Shake your head, spin your hips. And then pause in some stillness, let your head fall heavy, lift your hips high and strengthen through your arms. Take a deep inhale. And exhale, release. Walk to the top of your space, your toes come behind your wrist. Find a ragdoll pose, you can grab through your elbows, let your head fall heavy, and just sway back and forth. And let your low back kind of relax, and you can shift your body weight from foot to foot, stretch the backs of your legs. Hands come down to the mat. Inhale, lift up halfway, and lengthen your spine. Exhale, forward fold, release. Inhale, lift up halfway to a flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, forward fold and start to roll up to a stand nice and easy. At the top, you'll inhale your arms up over your head, press your palms together, lift and reach. Hands come to your heart, exhale with your thumbs at your chest, take a deep breath in. And then exhale out. Inhale, arms overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold, plant your palms and step your left foot to the back of your space. So your right foot stays at the top. Inhale, the chest forward. Exhale, your back knee touches down. Let your hips sink low. And pull your chest through to the top of your space. And breathe. It's weird to keep with no music. I know. I'm like, where's the music? <laughs> Strange. Strange times. Strange times. <laughs> Hips back into a half split. Let your right heel slide to the top. Keep your right toes flexed. And then shift back to the top. You can keep your back knee rounded. Left palm plants. Inhale the right arm high. Stack the shoulders. Right hand to the top of your thigh, turn and twist over your right shoulder. Inhale the right arm up. And exhale your right hand to the inside of your right foot for lizard. You can drop your forearms down if that feels good. Let your head fall heavy. And take a couple of deep breaths. Start to lift the chest up and you can recenter the right foot, bring your hands to either side. Your back knee comes up, find your back toes and step your left foot up to meet your right foot. Inhale, lift and lengthen halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise, arms overhead, lift up to the top, press the palms. And hands to heart, exhale, stay right here and breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, arms overhead, lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold, plant your palms and step your right toes to the back of your space and do a lunge. Inhale, the chest to the front. Exhale, back knee touches down. You can untuck the toes if you like. Let your hips sink and pull the chest through. Find your breath. Hips back into a half split. Let your left heel move to the top. Keep your left toes flexed as you lengthen your chest. And 
and start to shift back to the top of your back and you can stay down and plant your right palm and inhale, left arm high, stack the shoulders. Left hand to the top of your left thigh, turn and twist over your left shoulder. Inhale, left arm high. Exhale your hands to the inside of your foot for a lizard, your variation, whatever feels good today. And again, find your breath. Start to lift up to the palms of your hands and recenter your left foot with your hands on either side. Back knee comes up and step your right foot to the top of your space. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise, arms overhead, lift and reach. Hands to heart, exhale, take a deep breath in. And exhale out. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plant your palms and step back into a plank pose. And as you come into plank, your shoulders are stacked over your elbows, elbows stacked over your wrists, your fingers are spread wide, deep inhale. Exhale, lift from your hips downward, facing dog, hips high, let your head come heavy, strengthen through your arms. Inhale into a plank position, rolling forward, keeping the shoulders active, chin up. And exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale into plank. And exhale, hips high. We'll do two more. Inhale, breath brings you forward. And exhale, breath brings you back. Inhale into plank. And exhale, hips high. Take a deep breath in. And open mouth, exhale. You can let your knees drop down to the floor. Hopefully you feel a bit more warm and Nikki's gonna take it from here and teach you guys how to get on your hands. Yes. Um, so first of all, if as we're kind of moving through this, if you guys have any questions, please just feel free to uh, put them in and you'll see us kind of get up off our mats because neither <laughs> one of us can see that far. <laughs> so True, uh, please feel free to ask questions as we go. We're just gonna start with Chaturanga. Um, and it's also something to be noted that Steph and I do not um, really teach any rigidity in doing these postures. So ultimately the way that we feel um, about how we are going to practice your yoga is how does it feel to you in your body and if it feels really great keep practicing that way and if it doesn't feel great then let's see where we can change shift and adjust um, but as far as like how we teach things there's not like a, like a hard and fast rule so um, can I just interject and say the use of the word rigidity was very good. Thank you. <laughs> rigidity. Sometimes my tongue Say that ten times, times fast. Yeah. Rigidity. That was good. Was very, very good. That was good. I was super impressed. <laughs> I'm always impressed by your words. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to start in plank pose. And as you come into plank, I want you to notice how that feels in your shoulders. How does it feel in your elbows and your wrists and even in the back of the neck? And your knees can be up or they can be down for this. If they are up, how does it feel in your lower back? And if everything kind of checks out for you, then this is probably a really good position for you. But if not, I want you to sit back on your heels and then think about some ways that you can readjust the posture. So that could be by turning the fingers out a little bit. Um, it could be by widening the hands slightly. And you may need to change this up as you start to lower into the chaturanga too. So, um, we will get back to that position. Knees up or knees down. Keep the chin away from the chest. And then once you've kind of played with maybe turning the hands out slightly, I want you to feel you wrap your triceps back. As you wrap the triceps back, you're gonna press them out away and feel yourself kind of lift from the shoulders, getting all of the muscles engaged, helping to protect your joints. So pressing them out away, wrapping the triceps back, and pressing up and out of the shoulders, feeling the shoulders begin to engage. Now the lower abdominals squeeze in and you get tight through the midline of the body. Good, we'll press back. Just kind of rest the arms and maybe shake the hands if you need to stretch your wrists a little bit, you can. And take some time to change things too. So if we shift back into plank and you find yourself 
and then old pattern to look good to you, just acknowledge it, try again, shift back as often as you need to. And I will say, you are teaching, so I'm not, I don't want to interrupt too much, but I will say that what Nikki said was really good about maybe you need to change your hand position because I spent a very long time um, coming into plank pose thinking that my index fingers always needed to be pointing forward. And then I realized throughout my yoga journey that for my body, that doesn't actually work that well. So I turn my hands out and it feels a lot better. So make sure that you're playing with that, especially because you're at home and no one's really seeing what you're doing. So you have plenty of time to explore um, all of those different options. Yeah. For sure. So let's um, shift back into the plank. Find the hand placement that feels really good to you and know that this might not be where you stay because now we're going to start to lower down halfway. You'll keep the elbows in tight to the body as opposed to flaring out. That is going to put additional pressure in the outsides of the wrists as well as in the elbows and throughout the shoulders. So that's one thing we do want to avoid. Elbows pointing back as you lower down and then you're going to stop with the shoulders just above being in line sideways. with the elbows. Yeah. So Steph's going to turn sideways so that you can see this. Um, one thing that you do want to avoid in this posture is coming below parallel with the shoulders and the elbows. So if you only stop, come down an inch, and that's where you stop, that's great. There, there's nothing wrong with that. That's totally fine. If you want to come down so that the shoulders are parallel and in line with the elbows, that's also great. <laughs> if you drop the shoulders below the elbows, you're going to start to experience some pain if you're not just lowered all the way down to the ground. So if you're trying to hover with the shoulders down, you're putting a lot of pressure on the front part of that shoulder and also maybe starting to experience some pain in the elbows and the wrists. So that might be something to play with too. So she'll come down to halfway. And I have my knees down and know that that's totally fine. You'll still feel it even with your knees down. Uh, just kind of play with a few of those on your own. So you'll come up and down, up and down, up and down. If she was going to take this through a flow, she would have the choice then to stop and then make her way into an upward facing dog. The upward facing dog, if that hurts her lower back, you can keep the elbows bent. Keep the elbows as bent as you need to so that you don't put so much pressure on the lower back. It feels good to you to straighten the arms, go ahead. Or she could come down just to her halfway point or higher and then decide to lower all the way down to her belly, releasing the pressure, and then finding cobra or up dog before making her way to down dog or however, wherever you're moving in a class. Okay, so if you guys have questions on chaturanga specifically, um, go ahead and post those now and we'll try to address those. And um, we're, we are gonna move on to pro pose from here. So like I said, we're gonna encourage you guys to play around with that, play around with your hand placement, with turning the hands out slightly, with really wrapping those triceps back, getting um, strong and engaged through the shoulders and keeping your chin away from your chest. So that's another thing I do wanna address really quick is as you come into your plank pose and you start to lower, try not to lead with the nose and with the forehead by drooping the head and neck. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Because what's going to happen is you're then going to put more pressure into the shoulders. You want to keep a nice long line throughout the neck. Okay. Cool. So we are going to use those same arms. We're going to keep the shoulders just slightly lifted above that parallel position um, to get into crow pose. So you can start crow pose from the back of your mat. You can start from the top of the mat. We like to teach it from the top of the mat typically. So as you come to the top of the mat, you can be up on your toes. If um, you think getting into this, you're going to have a hard time getting your knees up into your armpits. I have long arms and short legs, so no problems here. <laughs> but if you are the other way around, grab a block um, and that might help you. And if you don't have a block, you can get creative with a stack of books. And then you may also want to have um, a stack of pillows below your face just to kind of help you getting through the fear of really taking flight for maybe the first time. So I'm going to have stuff first, just demo pro. It's gorgeous. <laughs> Thanks. And then as she comes out of pro, she comes out one foot at a time. Okay. So some things that you probably recognized were those chaturanga arms. She was also puffing through her upper back, which we did in the very beginning of plank. We also did it in cat pose. 
and she was keeping her head extend her head and neck extended so she was looking slightly in front just like we would for um, our chaturangas as opposed to looking down between the hands and tucking the chin to the chest or even looking back at the feet and watching the feet take um, flight we always want to be looking a little bit ahead so she'll go ahead and find her hand placement which is most likely going to be very similar to your plank pose but again you can play around with that she's going to start to wrap the triceps tightly behind her get really strong and active through her shoulders so she's staying lifted. This is all very familiar to plank pose. The abdominal wall begins to engage as she squeezes in tight and the knees are as high up into her armpits as she can possibly get them. Remember, she's looking ahead and she starts to rock forward so that her shoulders stack right over the fingertips. And then you can lift one foot by just pointing the toe and driving the heel toward the glute. And then if you feel comfortable, you lift the other. This is a pose that requires strength, um, but more than that, it requires a pretty good foundation and weight distribution, just kind of learning how to distribute the weight in a way that's right for you. I'm laughing because my knees were actually in my armpits because I can see my deodorant. That's good. <laughs> uh, some people prefer to do this with their knees on the outsides, almost like, a, like if you had a strap wrapped around your arm, which if you have access to a strap, you could take a strap and wrap it around your arm, and that helps to avoid the elbows wearing out. That also can help you get into the pose easier. But you could also use your own knees to do that. Um, for me, that's much harder than just finding sort of the tipping points of my body and using weight distribution as opposed to like sheer strength. I think that one requires a little more strength. So um, we'll give that a few tries with your pillows in front of your face and your forehead aiming. Um, not aiming at the floor, but not the top of the head. Questions are looking at the floor. Yeah. So Steph's gonna check on questions after you guys give that a few tries so that you can find if you have questions. In I'm trying not to put area. my face directly in the screen. You can put your toes up on the block, plant the palms, whole bunch of pillows, knees way up into your armpits as you shift forward, shift forward, shift forward. You're gonna feel your brakes turn on, which we'll talk about more in a handstanding tutorial that your knuckle toes pin up, one heel drives in, the other heel drives in. I'm still pressing and puffing, puffing through the upper back, pressing the mat away, just like I did in plank. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. So the key there, I think, is elbows wrapping back and not being too afraid to move those shoulders forward. Mm -hmm. um, what do you have to add? Oh, no, I don't have anything to add on the explanation. That was perfect. Um, but I was going to say, do you want to show them how they can do it in class? Yes. Yes. So um, we do cue for you to be able to take if you like to, if it's part of your practice, curl pose in our Sun B. Um, you could also do it in Sun A. You could do it when we practice Malasana. You could do it in a forward fold. Um, just as long as it's your intuition that's guiding you and it feels like a good and right place to do it, go for it. So um, I'll have Steph demo it from chair pose. So in Sun B, she takes chair, forward fold. She plants the hands where she would want them to be planted, shoulder width apart or wider, elbows back, shoulders strong, one foot up and then the other, chin away from the chest. She's engaging through the midline and pressing her mat away. She's got a little bit of a wider angle for her than her chaturanga arms, which is what we're looking for. You can step down as we've been showing you, or you can shoot the feet back. As she shoots back, she comes right away into her low push-up, just protecting her low back. If you prefer to come to a high push-up and it doesn't bother you, that's okay too. Get so, um, do you want to see it? Do you think they want to see it one more time? Do you guys want to see it one more time? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I can't handle this like non-immediate. I know, it's really hard to not have like direct feedback from people. Know. Um, sure, we can show them one more time. Okay, show them one more time. <laughs> we need to check it out. Okay. So I'm just gonna flow through it. So we go chair pose and axiom forward fold. Start to lift up into my crow pose on an inhale. I'll hold here for my exhale and inhale in. Then as I exhale, I shoot back into chaturanga, inhale into upward facing dog and exhale back into downward facing. Okay, so someone is wondering if we're gonna get into a sequence or a flow today. 
We weren't um, planning on one today with the workshop. However, we could run through a couple of Sundays um, and just kind of play around with it so that you guys can work on um, where you would incorporate it as well. You can have kind of your whole little setup ready to go. And if it's not for you yet, we'll give you some modifications there as well. So we'll start with top four months. Just winging it for you guys. I'm just winging it today. <laughs> Hands at your heart. Exhale completely. Inhale fully. Chair pose, bend the knees. Sweep the arms overhead. Forward fold over the legs. You'll either plant the hands shoulder width apart, elbows back, come up on the toes and put the knees way up into the armpits. Begin taking your time shifting forward or maybe you're just picking one heel up and then the other. Find the breath. You could also take Malasana here, or you could step back right away to plank pose. Work on wrapping the triceps back, puffing through the upper back, and keeping the chin away from the chest. You can step the feet down one at a time, or you can jump back to a little push-up and flow or skip the flow. Lift the right leg up. Bring your right knee to your right tricep. Think about squeezing the knee into the tricep, then lift the heel toward the glute. Right toes fly high. Right foot steps through as you find warrior one. Back heel down, toes overhead. Hands to the floor. Right foot steps back to plank or flow. Left toes fly high. Left knee, left tricep. You're squeezing, 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 pressing the mat away, bringing the heel toward the glute. Left toes high. Left foot steps through. Right heel down, warrior one. Hands to the floor. Step back, flow, or skip it. And we'll try it twice more. <laughs> you guys can try it as many times as you want. Look forward, bend the knees, walk or hop to the top of your mat. Half lift. Forward fold. Inhale, stand. Sweep the arms overhead. Hands to your heart. Chair pose. Forward fold or crow pose. If you're not in crow, you would half lift. And then fold. Walk or jump back. Flow or skip it. Right toes high, right knee, right tricep, drive the heel up, press the mat away, right toes high. Right foot steps through, warrior one. Hands to the floor, right foot back, slow or skip it. Left toes high, left knee, left tricep. Bend it high. Left foot steps through, warrior one. Hands to the floor, step back, flow. Okay, one more round, look forward, bend the knees, walk or hop to the top of your mat. Half lift, forward fold. Inhale, stand, sweep the arms overhead. Hands to your heart. Chair pose, bend the knees. Forward fold or crow. Halfway lift. Fold forward. Walk or jump back, flow. Right toes fly high. Right knee, right tricep, squeeze the heel up. Right toes high. Right foot steps through, warrior one. Hands to the floor. Right foot steps back, your path to down dog. Left toes fly high. Left knee, left tricep, heel squeezing up. Left toes high. Left foot steps through, warrior one. Hands to your mat. Step back and flow. One big breath in, and a full breath out. Drop the knees to the floor, hips to your heels. 
And I'll take you guys through some counter stretches to that while Steph checks the comments. Okay. So we've done a lot to really engage through the front line of the body. We're gonna kind of unwind that a little bit by coming to the belly and sticking the right toes, right arm out to the right and just kind of rolling over the right shoulder. Everybody's got it? Everyone's good. Hi, Heather. <laughs> One of my friends is watching in Arizona. Oh, fun. Yes. I guess I can do this too. <laughs> I can join in on the stretching if you want to. And we will get back to the sequences tomorrow. For those of you that are asking, we'll get back to our regular classes. So switch, left arm up. And we're happy to continue doing these tutorials as well. So if you guys do have other things that you want um, us to do, just let us know. Come back through center. Push yourself up to hero's pose. Hips on the heels, arms overhead, breathe in. Practice the arms, breathe out. Arms overhead, inhale. Cactus the arms. Once more, arms overhead. Cactus the arms. You can bring the left arm across the body. Kind of feel the hamstrings release to you as you rest. Lengthening a little more through the quads now. Feels good. Feels good to stretch. <laughs> yes. And then switch. And as you come back to center, you can have hands at heart center, you can rest the hands on the legs and roll them over. <laughs> Crazy. Good, so coming back to center, finishing stretching however you want, um, and letting us know what you guys want to see moving forward in the future as we do these solo from our houses. Um, still being connected. Yes, still being connected. And also, if you guys don't mind to drop in the comments, we cannot please or work with everybody's schedule, but if you could let us know the best times, like a 9 and a noon, um, or a 9 and a 4, like what would work best, and we'll try to schedule our live classes from what works best for you all moving here on out. We have very open schedules. Yeah, we don't have a lot going on, so we will try to make um, anything work for you guys. We just want to be here for you and to offer um, yoga classes as much as we can. Yeah. So thank, thank you guys, guys so much. Hope you have a great here. Monday. Um, wash your hands. Yes, and if, uh, <laughs> if you guys are watching this later and you come up with questions, then we can address those the next time we go live too. So yes. yeah. All right, see you guys soon. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.